Oh my god, heaviness coming right into the house. Did you hear something from upstairs walking around just now? Oh yeah, gosh. That's making an awful sound. The spirits in this house are very, very strong and manipulative, outright aggressive. <laughs> Bev bought this century home in Lindsay, Canada, four years ago. When I uh, came and looked at the house, I had felt that there was something here. I wasn't sure what it was, and being a very curious person that I am, I just kind of felt that I had to explore and find out what was trying to pull me in here. I looked at, bought, closed, and moved into this house in less than seven days. An inexplicable force drew Bev to the house. And soon after, strange things started to happen. Then I got the idea that I wanted to start renovating the house. Things started happening. I actually did become very scared. I knew it wasn't anything that could be explained. It was something that was a part of this house. I felt that whatever it was definitely wanted my attention. I have had people run out this door when things happen around here. With her guests running out the door due to unexplainable occurrences, Bev decided to contact the Paranormal Home Inspectors team for help. Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind Bev's unsettling experiences. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Bev to hear firsthand what she has been experiencing. Now, tell me what's been going on in your home. Well, there's been quite a few things that have been going on in the last uh, four plus years since I've been in the house. Okay, such as? First thing I noticed was uh, an alarm clock. It will all of a sudden come out with a real high-pitched squeal. And this is not something that a manufacturer would program into their alarm clocks. Any other electronic issues? The TV in my living room has a tendency to turn itself on. This goes on at least once a week. Any other issues besides electronic? I've had occasions where uh, I've been in the kitchen with a friend and we hear mice. We have scoured both upstairs and downstairs and there's no signs of mice anywhere in the house. I lay upstairs in bed at night and I will hear banging in the living room. And yet when I've gone downstairs to check, everything seems to be okay. I've had several instances where it sounds like somebody's upstairs moving furniture across the hardwood floor. And yet there's nobody in the house other than myself. What about plumbing issues? Having any plumbing issues at all? There was a gentleman up on the roof doing some repairs. He reported that apparently the toilet kept flushing all by itself. And there was nobody in the house at the time. Has anybody else experienced anything in the home? My friend Leslie had come up for the afternoon. So we had sat at my pub table to have a glass of wine, and then we decided we wanted to do some shopping. So Leslie said, finish your glass of wine, and away we'll go. OK, girl, let's go. When Leslie and I came home a couple of hours later, did I not leave my wine glass upside down when we left? you got to be kidding me, right? Both of us had noticed that my wine glass had been refilled, and there was nobody in the house at that time. Another friend of mine, while she was upstairs, she had a very, very sick feeling come over her. And when she was standing at the top of the stairs, it was almost like somebody had taken their hands and tried to push her down my spiral staircase. So, Bev, what do you think is actually happening in the home? I honestly do not know. What are you hoping that our team is going to be able to do for you? I'm hoping to have some sort of an explanation, some answers to a lot of the unexplained occurrences that have been happening in my home over the last four years. After the meeting with Bev, Michelle begins her research into the property and surrounding area. Certified Home Inspector Brian Daly arrives at the house to start his investigation. All right, we're landed right here in the kitchen. My notes tell me that the homeowners complained about noises such as mice, also furniture being moved above us. 
one thing we have to keep in mind here is that we are in an older building. The type of construction didn't really require a whole lot of insulation or soundproofing. Now, one thing I do notice is that there's a clothesline just out the window. Every time the neighbor puts clothes on the line, it gives a high-pitched squeal, which can sound like mice. I'm going to have a look underneath the kitchen sink and see if there is any evidence of mice. Now, this is the usual spot where you would find evidence of mice. And I don't see any evidence of anything under here. Normally, they hang out in these areas simply because that's where the food is. Yeah, no evidence of anything going on here. So I'm pretty satisfied that there's no mice, at least in this area. As we go through the house, we'll look for more signs and clues. So we're here in the living room, and the complaint that I've got here is with this clock radio. According to my notes, it's turning it on randomly and making an awful sound. We'll have a quick look and turn it on. Oh, yeah, gosh. That's making an awful sound. I agree with the homeowner. The noise that came out of it was really weird. The speaker in this particular unit is not functioning properly. My recommendation is change the clock. Not going to cost you all that much money, and it'll probably give you peace of mind. I'm really starting to shake. Something's popping in, doesn't want me in this space. Oh, man, this is high energy here. Oh, my god, it's not good. It's not good, man. Our client, Bev, bought this century home four years ago. Shortly after she moved in and started renovating the house, strange and unexplainable things started to happen. The TV in my living room has a tendency to turn itself on. There was a gentleman up on the roof doing some repairs. He reported that apparently the toilet kept flushing all by itself. I have had people run out this door when things happen around here. Feeling more unsettled about the strange occurrences happening in her home, Bev decided it was time to bring in the paranormal home inspectors. After meeting mm. with Bev, Michelle began her research on the property and uncovered a string of tragedies that had occurred on Bev's street. Michelle speaks with a local historian to get more details. Water Street has evidence of the paranormal and perhaps it's connected in some ways to this particular murder. Sarah Hopwood was murdered by a man called Nesbitt in 1874. It seems Sarah was not interested in Mr. Nesbitt anymore and he murdered her. The ghost of the murdered woman may still be seeking some sort of vindication. Right. I don't know. All speculation. Home Inspector Brian Daly continues his inspection of the property. Okay, so according to my notes, there were roofers on the roof, and they heard what they thought was the toilet flushing repeatedly. We're going to have a look at it and just make sure it does work as it should. All the mechanisms seem to be in place. There's no indication that it's leaking at all. Inside the bowl itself, no problems with the bowl, and the actual toilet is nice and firm on the ground. The hearsay evidence actually came from roofers that were on top of the roof. Unless they were actually in the bathroom and witnessed it, I can't imagine that this toilet was flushing on its own. So we're going to take that one off our list. From here, we're going to move into the back of the house. We've got to have a look at a set of stairs. OK, the stairs in question are just down the hall, but you know what? I'm looking at this floor, and there's tons of movement in it. Now, this could actually be contributing to what we hear down below us in the kitchen area. This is a really weird hallway to walk down. There's not a whole lot of headroom, and I'm feeling a little bit dizzy just being here. However, these are the stairs in question. The notes tell me that a friend was standing at the top of the stairs, felt dizzy, and felt like they were pushed and almost fell down the stairs. Now, I've got to say, this is one of the most dangerous set of stairs I think I've ever seen. There's no handrail on one side. The risers and the winders are just not designed properly. That, combined with the floor that we're standing on, could absolutely make somebody feel completely dizzy. And if you're standing too close, you could absolutely lose your balance on these set of stairs. The homeowner needs to address this before somebody really gets hurt. I'm going to go down them, take my chances. Down here in the family room, there are a couple of issues. The first is with this bar area here, and the next is with the TV. According to my notes, the homeowner and a friend were sitting and drinking wine. They thought they'd finished their glasses and then left for shopping. Now they came back and apparently one of the wine glasses was full again. 
I get a bit of a chuckle out of this because people don't realize the effects of alcohol. You can lose track of what's going on. Now, there is a chance that she filled up the wine glass herself or somebody else was playing a prank on her. We're gonna take that one off the list as something that really can be chalked up to wine, women, and shopping. From here, let's talk about this TV. Now, the issue here with the TV is that apparently comes on by itself. Now, the first thing I notice is that there's so many remotes for the TV, the DVD player, and the cable box, and there's a universal remote running the whole thing. You know, I've seen it before where universal remotes either aren't put together properly or wired properly, or they could be picking up the signal from other remotes and turning the TV on and off. So not unusual for electronics to act up if they're not wired properly together. Overall, this house is in pretty good shape for what it is. There's nothing out of the ordinary happening in this house, and the homeowner can live in it with confidence. Brian believes that Bev's century home is in good condition, and there is a rational explanation for everything she has been experiencing. But with Bev feeling unsettled, intuitive healer Nadine Mercy will conduct her investigation. Nadine arrives at the property with absolutely no information about what has been occurring. My eyes are being drawn right to this sign right here. There's an intention here. The feminine energy is bringing in the spirit in this house. And I'm really starting to shake right now. Whoever cooks in here gets into their zone and connects to spirit very, very easily. I can tell that they're seeing something. I got a headache right now. Something's popping in, doesn't want me in this space at all. Let's have a peek outside. A lot of heaviness in that shack right there. Right there. Spirit comes here and moves through here often, but I can feel heaviness right in here. Burial ground. I'm hearing tribe or a spiritual community. It's a very strong, sacred energy here, and it's been disrupted. Oh, my God, heaviness coming right into the house again. Let's go upstairs. Oh, my God. Right in here. She's open to this and has the power to move this forward. This is high energy here, high, high energy. The female energy is very curious, very opening. She's bringing this on. Oh, man. It's crazy energy now. It's stirred up in the house. I'm starting to get angry now. This energy's coming right through me, and it's like, it wants to draw lightning bolts. They want me to get angry because they want me to show it. That's a male energy. It's a big guy. He's really, really, really big. Headache, so he's coming right through me. I don't like this energy. Oh, he blocks the flow. That's his intention. Stopping things from moving forward. He's a bully. He's trying to get somebody's attention. Hers. I'm hearing the word jealous, like, you know, if your spouse was to go out that night, I'd be, you know, wondering where they were. It's just not that love energy. It's not good. It's not good, man. The spirits in this house are very, very strong and manipulative, outright aggressive. The energy here is not dangerous, but it can be if you're so open and subjective. They're trying to figure out whether they should move or not. It depends on how strong they are. If she's super strong, she can combat this energy. If she fears this, she would amplify it and bring it in. If she wants to move, she can move. Although she will be attracted to other energies wherever she goes until she finishes and completes this path of moving forward. With night falling on the final day of our investigation, Michelle and her assistant, Matt, prepare to spend the night. Upstairs. Get out your dosing rods. Ain't there's a cross. The cross means that we're picking up on some kind of energy. What was that? You heard that? Yeah, it sounded like a screeching noise. Can you do it again? We think we heard you. Are you the one that's making all the electronics malfunction in this house? What, what the that? hell? Is there somebody in here? Whoa! Is that you? We're hearing you. Can you do it again? Is that from, oh, yeah. shit. is it from downstairs? It feels like chilly here. Yeah, it's like freezing here. There's it's no windows. Whoa, 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 what yeah. the Light just came on and off. Yeah. Light. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh. Now there's this screeching voice. Can you do it again? We want to hear where this is coming from. Do it again. 
Did you hear something from upstairs walking around just now? There's that sound again. Whoa, 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 okay, go, go, yeah. Matt, go, go, go. Go, Matt, go, go, go. Can you do it again? What is that radio frequency noise? You only I can... Holy oh. shit. Do you want us to leave your house? If yes, turn the light on or make a screeching noise. Do you want us to leave your house? What do you want to do? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, shit. So that is the sound. <sighs> like, that's just so weird. Let's take a walk outside. Holy. Yeah, it's pulling. Yeah. So we're yeah. definitely picking something whoa. up. Oh, see? It just, like, flipped right around. Yeah. There's, like, some kind of <sighs> energy line or something. For sure. We're going to wrap this investigation up. I think we got enough. I'm not going insane. It is definitely a real situation. A century home in Lindsay, Canada. A woman experiencing strange phenomena in her home wants some concrete answers. Are paranormal forces at work, or is she going crazy? Three inspectors that form a unique team are brought in to investigate. What have they discovered? What did they experience? And what will our homeowner do? Our inspectors have completed a multi-level home inspection. Certified home inspector Brian Daly. Here's what he had to say. The homeowners complained about noises such as mice, also furniture being moved above us. The structure of the house isn't designed for soundproofing. I did a thorough check, and I saw no evidence of mice. An alarm clock turning it on randomly and making an awful sound. Replace the clock, and problem solved. The TV turning on by itself, not uncommon for TVs if the remotes are not synced properly to turn on by themselves. The toilet on the second floor was flushing repeatedly by itself. When I looked at it, the there was no evidence that was happening. A friend standing at the top of the stairs felt like they were pushed and almost fell down the stairs. Those stairs are one of the most dangerous set of stairs I think I've ever seen. The homeowner needs to address this before somebody really gets hurt. The homeowner and a friend were drinking wine. They thought they'd finished their glasses and then left for shopping. Now they came back and apparently one of the wine glasses was full again. Likely someone in the house was playing a trick on her and filled up the wine glass again, or she just forgot and filled it up herself. Overall, this house is in pretty good shape, and the homeowner can live in it with confidence. What do you think? Nice to know my house is in good shape. My team and I conducted our paranormal investigation, and a lot of really crazy things started happening. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. What is that radio frequency noise? Only I can. Holy oh. sh! Uh, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Go. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Our intuitive healer, Nadine Mercy. I'm going to show you what her findings were. Mm. That's a male energy. It's a big guy. He's really, really, really big. Oh, he blocks the flow. He's a bully. He's trying to get somebody's attention. Hers. I'm hearing the word jealous. It's not good. It's not good, man. I'm not going insane. It, it's real. It is definitely a real situation. I've done some research on your house and the surrounding area. This land used to be the campsite of the Mississauga Indians. When Nadine went to the back of your yard... Burial ground. I'm hearing tribe or a spiritual community. She believes that the back corner of your yard may have once been a burial site for Indians. I don't like that corner of the yard. Then in 1896, a horrible murder occurred very close to your house. A man by the name of James Agnew was murdered and robbed by a Jack Kearney. I've had a feeling that there was violence surrounding this house. And finally, a girl by the name of Sarah Hopwood was murdered in 1874, very close to your house. It seems Sarah Hopwood was not interested in Mr. Nesbitt anymore, and he murdered her. It's possible that Sarah's spirit is lingering around waiting for justice. Based on our investigation, we believe that there are spirits in your house. The spirits in this house are very, very strong and manipulative, outright aggressive. The energy here is not dangerous, but it can be if you're so open and subjective. If she fears this, she would amplify it and bring it in. Yeah, that makes sense. But the key thing to remember here is that you are the one that is in control. I own this house. Yes, that's right. Not the energies 
that are here. We hope that our investigation have provided you with some answers. Thank you. I really appreciate the team coming in. A few months after our paranormal inspection, Bev's outlook has improved. Now that I've got the answers, I know what's going on. It's given me a new outlook on which way I'm supposed to go. I am very, very glad that I did contact the uh, paranormal home inspection team. I'm enjoying life a lot more now, much more. This is my house. Heaviness coming right into the house. Did you hear something from upstairs walking around just now? Oh, yeah, gosh. That's making an awful sound. The spirits in this house are very, very strong and manipulative, outright aggressive. this century home in Lindsay, Canada, four years ago. When I uh, came and looked at the house, I had felt that there was something here. I wasn't sure what it was, and being a very curious person that I am, I just kind of felt that I had to explore and find out what was trying to pull me in here. I looked at, bought, closed, and moved into this house in less than seven days. An inexplicable force drew Bev to the house, and soon after, strange things started to happen. Then I got the idea that I wanted to start renovating the house. Things started happening. I actually did become very scared. I knew it wasn't anything that could be explained. It was something that was a part of this house. I felt that whatever it was definitely wanted my attention. I have had people run out this door when things happen around here. With her guests running out the door due to unexplainable occurrences, Bev decided to contact the Paranormal Home Inspectors team for help. Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind Bev's unsettling experiences. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Bev to hear firsthand what she has been experiencing. Now, tell me what's been going on in your home. Well, there's been quite a few things that have been going on in the last uh, four plus years since I've been in the house. Okay, such as? First thing I noticed was uh, an alarm clock. It will all of a sudden come out with a real high pitch squeal. And this is not something that a manufacturer would program into their alarm clocks. Any other electronic issues? The TV in my living room has a tendency to turn itself on. This goes on at least once a week. Any other issues besides electronic? I've had occasions where uh, I've been in the kitchen with a friend and we hear mice. We have scoured both upstairs and downstairs and there's no signs of mice anywhere in the house. I lay upstairs in bed at night and I will hear banging in the living room. And yet when I've gone downstairs to check, everything seems to be okay. I've had several instances where it sounds like somebody's upstairs moving furniture across the hardwood floor. And yet there's nobody in the house other than myself. What about plumbing issues? Having any plumbing issues at all? There was a gentleman up on the roof doing some repairs. He reported that apparently the toilet kept flushing all by itself. And there was nobody in the house at the time. Has anybody else experienced anything in the home? My friend Leslie had come up for the afternoon, so we had sat at my pub table to have a glass of wine, and then we decided we wanted to do some shopping. So Leslie said, finish your glass of wine, and away we'll go. Okay, girl, let's go. 
when Leslie and I came home a couple of hours later. Did I not leave my wine glass upside down when we left? You gotta be kidding me, right? Both of us had noticed that my wine glass had been refilled and there was nobody in the house at that time. Another friend of mine, while she was upstairs, she had a very, very sick feeling come over her. And when she was standing at the top of the stairs, it was almost like somebody had taken their hands and tried to push her down my spiral staircase. So Bev, what do you think is actually happening in the home? I honestly do not know. What are you hoping that our team is going to be able to do for you? I'm hoping to have some sort of an explanation, some answers to a lot of the unexplained occurrences that have been happening in my home over the last four years. After the meeting with Bev, Michelle begins her research into the property and surrounding area. Certified Home Inspector Brian Daly arrives at the house to start his investigation. All right, we're landed right here in the kitchen. My notes tell me that the homeowners complained about noises such as mice, also furniture being moved above us. One thing we have to keep in mind here is that we are in an older building. The type of construction didn't really require a whole lot of insulation or soundproofing. Now, one thing I do notice is that there's a clothesline just out the window. Every time the neighbor puts clothes on the line, it gives a high-pitched squeal, which can sound like mice. I'm gonna have a look underneath the kitchen sink and see if there is any evidence of mice. Now, this is the usual spot where you would find evidence of mice. And I don't see any evidence of anything under here. Normally, they hang out in these areas simply because that's where the food is. Yeah, no evidence of anything going on here. So I'm pretty satisfied that there's no mice, at least in this area, as we go through the house. We'll look for more signs and clues. So we're here in the living room, and the complaint that I've got here is with this clock radio. According to my notes, it's turning it on randomly and making an awful sound. We'll have a quick look and turn it on. Oh, yeah, gosh. That's making an awful sound. I agree with the homeowner. The noise that came out of it was really weird. The speaker in this particular unit is not functioning properly. My recommendation is change the clock. Not going to cost you all that much money, and it'll probably give you a peace of mind. I'm really starting to shake. Something's popping in, doesn't want me in this space. Oh, man, this is high energy here. Oh, my God. It's not good. It's not good, man. 